Hello. So today I want to show you how you can start to use ChatGPT very slowly. I just want to jump into it and step by step we will integrate the ChatGPT in our workflow as a UI UX designers. So I wanted to start with something very small. How I could use ChatGPT for a UI. And that was my first prompt about that. So let's imagine I have something very, very small. I need to create like a very small mobile app. So I wanted to ask ChatGPT to help me with the colors, with the text and with other UI elements. I don't want to overwhelm the ChatGPT too much. I just want to see how will it solve it and how will it help me and what answers it will give me while I'm using that AI. So as you may see here, I'm using the free version of AI. I already like sent the request for the new version. And once I have an invitation, I will pay for it and I will use it in the future. But now let's talk about the free version. I sent the ChatGPT such a prompt as you may see here on the screen. I, and I believe I will leave this prompt somewhere in the description or like in a first comment under the video. So we can also try and use it. And I was thinking I need to help a little bit as a UI designer. I need to help a little bit to ChatGPT to understand what's this course, what's the hierarchy and like what means the primary button, secondary button and so on. And I also asked ChatGPT to give me an answer in a table view. So I have different columns and I have different results. That would be easier for me to use it. And my first prompt wasn't that great. I mean, it's it's nice, but something we're missing there. And then I added another prompt. I need a four different surfaces and it added me four different surfaces here. But let me explain first what I asked from ChatGPT. Yeah, I asked for different surfaces that I can use in my project. One would be like background, the second might be something for a model window, the third one might be something for a box design inside the model window. So I need something that I can overlap on each one. So I have four different elements that I can put on it and they still will be visible. You pretty know about it if you're using a lot of box UI design for that. So it gave me four different surfaces and it even more it explained me why and how I should use it. But something was missing again so I asked to create a primary button green and secondary is not that bright because the first primary button was yellow and secondary was green which is not that great because I want to highlight and amplify only one button on the screen and I don't want to see like a lot of yellow or like greenish buttons on my screen I just want to user focus on the main CTA which means primary button but secondary button will be more like grayish tone. After some adjustments, the ChatGPT generated for me the very last result and I was pretty happy with that. So I just used all those things and implement that in a Figma to see if I really can use it or not. So here's my Figma. The next thing I want to talk with you, I also changed a little bit order here. Because as you may see here, for some reasons, ChatGPT decided that it would be a nice idea to have background this color, but the first surface will be white. Which is not that great because if you want to change the hierarchy here, as you may see here, if I add on the background something small like this, it will be looks like a stamp, something very bright inside the surface that is not that bright. I'm not a big fan of that. I believe every surface that you're using should be a little bit brighter than the previous one. So that's why I changed the color order here and decided to use the white color for the background. But the next surfaces will be a little bit more darker. So here we have our color palette for the surfaces. And the next is our buttons. Here's our primary button I adjusted myself, but let's follow the ChatGPT proposal. It proposed me to use the white color. And for the gray, it was something, something else. Like for the secondary button, it changed me the background color to the gray. And it also proposed me to use this exact gray color for, for the secondary button, but I did not like it that much. Yeah, it still looks fine, but for me, it looks more like an active button. So I decided to use the same white color here. And the negative button, yeah, it looks fine. It looks like a red, something that you don't want to click on. But sometimes you need to click it to delete or like remove or clean or do something like that. But you will see how did I use it in the real mockup. Because I cannot call it like real negative button. I just wanted to something opposite the primary button, some, some opposite color. Because usually we have a big set of different buttons here. Not only like negative primary secondary, but you may also have a third button. You may also have a default button. You may also have a inactive button, outline button, ghost button, and so on, so on. 
And here all the colors that it proposed me to use for my text and visual care are here. So for the common text, it's like 99 this code and then for subtitle this code and for the title this code. It's not that bad though, and especially if we look on the real example that I used here before, but for maybe for the sign up, I would also change to the green, make it more greenish, but I just wanted to, you know, use all the range of the colors here. And it looks not that bad, but the problem here, I believe, the color for the text because these two colors like if let me show you which colors i'm talking about this color and this color it's not that great working together with this color and especially they both are not working that great with, with uh, the common text color so you should change it or you should play around it a little bit more otherwise you will see some problems especially if talking about readability so if you make it a little bit more darker like this and then you will slowly down with the other colors and make them also like a little bit more darker. You still have your visual hierarchy, but the readability will be improved here a lot. And let's use the, the most dark color for the surfaces. It's still kind of fine, but I would not go with that range because like this range of colors are too high here. Let's take and put it on, on each other. So if I put one model above another, we see that they have a very good contrast here, but we still can make it a little bit more darker, I believe. Like this. And that still would be fine. And especially if you want to use this surface, like let's use this surface for the text, for example, just to see how they're like overlapping each other. And it's still fine, yeah. So the main question here, can ChatGPT help you improve or like speed up your work process, especially when you're thinking about the colors, all that stuff. Yes, it can if you will build a very proper prompt. But usually you have a good set of like, you have a, your brand colors that providing by graphic designers or you have at least the logo type and the colors that you can start with. In that way, you can ask ChatGPT to improve it and give you more different versions. But I would not count on the ChatGPT that much on the 100%. Yeah, it might help you like I would say on 70%, but then you should go through the colors yourself and adjust and be sure and test every color to be sure that it will be like readable and you will following and you have a very good contrast. And in future videos, we will play a little bit more with the JetGPT and see how else ChatGPT can help us in terms of UI, UX and product design. Thanks all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed that. Please smash like under this video. And if you have any other questions or like proposals, what and how are you using the ChatGPT to improve your UI, UX and product design, please just let me in a comment.